During the interview process, many employers ask candidates to complete an assessment test before advancing to the next stage. These tests are designed to measure skills that are essential for candidate success on the job. Microsoft PowerPoint is one of the most popular tools for creating presentations. Whether you're using it for work, school, or personal projects, knowing how to use PowerPoint effectively is a valuable skill. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to get started. You'll learn how to create professional presentations, export your slides as a video, use ChatGPT and other AI tools to boost your productivity. All of this and more right here on Online Training for Everyone. As a professional, you very frequently face the challenge of building a presentation that looks polished without spending hours on design and animations. Let me show you how you can build cool presentation with Microsoft Copilot AI for the topic Time Management Strategies that work. To start, let's open PowerPoint and activate Copilot. In the home screen, I clicked Create with Copilot. In the section Create a Presentation About, I typed a topic Time Management Strategies that work. In seconds, Copilot generated an outline for the presentation, which was amazingly good. You can see that all key topics have been covered here. It also estimated the number of slides. It would be between 20 and 40. I'm happy with the content and now I can click the button Generate Slides. These are the slides Copilot generated. As you can see, they're pretty good. There is a warning, AI generated content may be incorrect, but I'm planning to validate it before presenting. So I'm gonna click Keep it. By default, Copilot switched us to Slide Sorter View, which I rarely use, but it is part of PowerPoint. To change it, you click on View and change either to Normal or to Outline Master. Now let's look at the presentation slide by slide to see how we can enhance it. The first slide looks kind of boring. What can we do? We can use Microsoft Designer. It's an internal tool inside PowerPoint. Click on the Design tab and click Design Suggestions. Designer generated few interesting ideas. Let's pick this one. As you can see, once I clicked on it, it automatically applied the formatting to the first slide. You can do the same for every slide in the presentation. Let's do it for the second slide. It's a little bit different, but Designer generated a lot of other ideas of how you can format the slide. And you can choose based on your preferences. You may ask, what about animations? The cool thing is that Copilot added animations automatically. Let's look at the first slide. If we navigate to Animations tab and click Animation Pane, you see that animations have been added. Let's take a look. Isn't it cool? Let's look at the second slide just to confirm. When I click play all, you see that we also have animations here. I also wanted to tweak slide 4. Right now it shows the content for defining time management and its benefits. I only wanted to keep the benefits. So I opened Copilot by navigating to the Home tab and clicking Copilot. And then I typed in Copilot window Replace slide 4 bullets with benefits of time management only, removing the definition. Copilot processed and understood my request, and generated 3 bullets I can use to show the benefits, reduce stress, increased efficiency, and work-life balance. It also suggested that now I can copy this content and apply it to the slide in PowerPoint. Then I previewed the full deck in presenter mode. To do this, I clicked on the slideshow button. Every slide was clean, consistent, and timed for real delivery. No clunky transitions, no visual noise. The entire build took just a few minutes, start to finish. The animations, the images, and the bullet logic, all handled by Copilot Plus Designer, with the few simple prompts. Here's the quick workflow recap for you. Start with Copilot, let it generate, animate, and structure your message. Use Microsoft Designer to clean up layouts, refine with smart prompts, and preview like a pro. And this is how you build a standout animated PowerPoint. Fast, smart, and focused, and with AI. Very often, you may need to share a presentation with people who won't be there live. I needed to turn my time management strategies that work PowerPoint into a video, something I could share with the clients or drop into the training portal. PowerPoint has a built-in export to video tool, and with the little help from Copilot, the process was fast and polished. I used Microsoft Copilot to generate the narration script and rehearse timings. If you don't rehearse timings, PowerPoint defaults to 5 seconds per slide. That's fine for static slides, but bad for animated ones. Because my PowerPoint deck had animations, I felt that I need to do pacing first before exporting the video. 
To open Copilot, on the Home tab, you click Copilot button. And here in Copilot window, you can type the message. Write a short narration script for each slide in the deck. Here's the message I received back. I've added speaker notes to all slides. Review each slide and make edits manually. Or undo it and try again. Let's take a look at the notes for the first slide. You see that information was generated by Copilot. And here's my script for the first slide. Smart goals provide a structured framework for setting objectives that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And if I close Copilot window to expand the size of the slide, I can see that it matches perfectly to the information I'm trying to present. Next, I need to rehearse the presentation with narration. To do this, I clicked Slide Show and then Rehearse Timings. Here I read the narration aloud, and PowerPoint automatically recorded the time I spent on each slide. At the end, it prompted me to save the timings, and I clicked Yes. Now the presentation had accurate pacing, ready to become a video with the voice style delivery, even if you didn't record a real audio. It's always a good idea to review animations and visual flow before exporting. To do this, you need to go to Animation Pane and check that all animations aligned with my narration timings. I navigated to Animations tab and clicked Animation Pane. Each slide had different animations, and you can see all of them in Animation Pane. You can play them as well. Keep in mind that clean, controlled pacing is what separates amateur slideshows from the professional video. Now we are ready to export presentation as a video file. To do this, let's navigate to File, Export, and then Create a Video. I chose Full HD, which is 1080p resolution, for sharp output, and made sure that the settings set Use Recorded Timings and Narration, which I selected as Yes. On the File Export screen, I selected my Documents folder and clicked Export. PowerPoint rendered the entire presentation, animations, transition and pacing into a standalone video. You can see the progress of export at the bottom. The result of the export was a clean, professional quality video that I could share by email, upload to YouTube or embed into the course. Most professionals eventually face the challenge of making a strong PowerPoint presentation. Whether it's for pitching an idea, leading a meeting, teaching a class or sharing progress in a virtual team setting. Let me walk you through five essential presentation tips, and along the way, I'll show you PowerPoint features that can make your slides more effective, polished, and easier to build. Let's start with the structure. A lot of people waste time formatting slides one by one. But if you want a clean, consistent design across the whole presentation, your best friend is the Slide Master. The Slide Master lets you control fonts, colors, logos, and layout spacing across every slide type in your deck. A common mistake is trying to cram multiple points into one slide. Instead, aim for one idea per slide. Think of each slide like a billboard – short, focused, and instantly readable. Now let's talk visuals. Good presentations don't just tell, they show. Use images, charts, and icons that directly support your message. In addition to images you have, PowerPoint offers smart art, icons, and chart tools that make it easy to build visual support without needing graphic design skills. One of the fastest ways to lose the audience is too much text. Aim for 5-6 words per line and no more than 3-4 lines per slide. Also, use large fonts, at least 24 points, so the text is readable from across the room or through a zoom window. PowerPoint gives you font presets, alignment tools, and access to easy-to-read fonts like Calibri, Sigoi UI, or Arial. Every good presentation ends with the clear call to action or summary. What do you want your audience to remember to do next? Use the bold summary slide and next step checklist. You can even use Design Ideas, a PowerPoint 365 feature to automatically generate clean layout suggestions for your final slide. A lot of times you may need to understand your sales funnel. And there's no better way to do it than build a sales funnel process flow diagram in PowerPoint. Let's start with the simple question, what is the process flow? A process flow is a step-by-step -step visual roadmap that shows how work gets done. It outlines actions and decisions in a structured way, helping teams operate with clarity and consistency. In a sale context, it helps track how leads move from first contact to close deal and even beyond. Every funnel begins with attention. In the attract leads phase, your goal is to bring potential customers into the ecosystem. That could happen through ads, social media, SEO, or content marketing. You're not selling yet, you're just opening the door. Once someone shows interest, it's time to qualify. Is this lead just browsing or seriously exploring the solution? You can offer something valuable, like a free guide or webinar, and look at their engagement. 
Are they clicking, watching, signing up? If yes, move them forward. Now nurture this relationship. For qualified leads, deliver content that builds the trust. Emails, videos, case studies, or educational blog posts. This step addresses objections and helps them see the benefit of working with you. When the lead is warm, it's time to present your offer. Show how your product or service solves their problem. This could be a demo, personalized sales call, or a landing page that clearly explains the value you provide. In the next stage, the focus is on conversion. Handle final objections, offer a guarantee or incentive if needed, and make purchasing as simple and frictionless as possible. Confidence and ease lead to conversions. After the sale, don't disappear. Deliver what you promised and follow up. Ask for feedback, provide onboarding if needed, and begin post-sale nurturing to encourage repeat business or referrals. And the final step is optimization. Look at what's working and what's not. Analyze where leads drop off, then adjust, retarget, or re-engage. A strong funnel is never static. It gets better with every cycle. Most professionals eventually face the challenge of customizing their documents, presentations, or creative work with the perfect font. Maybe you're designing a polished resume, building a pitch deck, or refining a client-facing reports. All the default fonts just don't cut it. The first step is find and download the font. You typically find the font online, maybe through Google Fonts, Font Squirrel, or your company's brand asset library. For example, I might be interested in a font named Anton and I would like to download it from Google Fonts. Here's the pro tip for you when choosing font to download. Always check if the font comes with commercial license. Many free fonts are for personal use only. Using them in business can violate licensing terms. Fonts typically downloaded as zip files, and you can see this by enabling extensions. Before installing the font, you need to extract the font files. Right-click on the zip file, choose Extract All, and unzip it. Inside the zip archive, you usually see a TTF or OTF file. These are standard font formats in Windows. In my case, Anton Regular comes as TTF file. You can double-click the font file to open the preview. You will see sample text in different sizes and styles. This is your chance to decide if this is for your brand. Clean, readable, and professional. And here's the pro tip for you. Always prioritize legibility and brand consistency. Try to avoid novelty fonts unless they match your identity or purpose. Now let's install the font. At the top of the preview window, click Install. Or you can also right-click on the TTF file and choose the Install. Keep in mind that if you are on your work laptop, you might need admin rights. If not, right-click and choose the Install for all users. Now let's verify that font is available in the Office apps. When we open Word, we need to select the text and change it to the newly installed font. Looks like everything is working perfectly. And here's the business tip for you. Custom fonts add polish and professionalism for resumes, marketing decks, and branded documents. But be careful. If you send the font to someone who doesn't have the font, it may break the layout. One of the most common methods is something called print to PDF. If you have a document opened on your Windows computer, you just go to print, select Microsoft print to PDF as your printer, but instead of sending it to a real printer, it saves your file as PDF. Simple as that. If you're using Office 365, there's another built-in option. Just go to File, Save As, and you will see PDF listed right there. It works across Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Speaking of Excel, you can even print just one sheet or define a print area if you only want certain part of your spreadsheet. And in Word or PowerPoint, you can choose to bring specific pages or slides instead of the whole document directly into the PDF. Now, if you've got a paper document, you can scan it and save it as PDF. Just keep in mind, those scanned files are usually treated like images, so the text can't be selected or copied unless you're using OCR, that is Optical Character Recognition. Another great option, online PDF converters. Websites like Small PDF, I Love PDF, or PDF24 let you upload a Word doc, Excel sheet, or even an image and instantly convert it to PDF right in your browser. No software needed, just upload, convert, and download. The challenge becomes with the fact that you share the document with the sites, and it's not recommended if you're concerned about data privacy. Are you using Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides? Open your file, head to File Download, and choose PDF Document. This is especially handy if you're using Chromebook or working from the cloud. You can also save a web page as a PDF using your browser's print feature. Whether you're on the Chrome, Firefox, Edge, or Safari, just press Ctrl-P or navigate to the menu and select Print. 
then choose Save to PDF. And finally, if you are on the go, you can just take picture with your phone and then use the app to turn it into PDF. There are tons of free apps like Adobe Scan, Cam Scanner and others that let you do it in just few taps. Super fast and super convenient. A lot of times you need to know how to insert one file into another. For example, embedding PDF resume into Word or Word doc into PowerPoint. To insert the file, you need to navigate to Insert tab in the ribbon. This is where you will find options for adding objects. Click the Object button and then choose Create from File. This allows you to embed an existing file from your computer. PDF file got embedded inside the Word document. You can also display file as an icon. Here's how you can do it. Follow the same steps, but check Display as icon if you prefer the clean look. This also makes it easier to open with the double click later. Here are some important considerations. Embedded files increase file size. Whatever was the size of original document, you need to add to it size of the embedded file. You can double click the icon to open embedded file. For example, I can open this sample resume in Adobe Acrobat Reader. Files stay embedded across the devices. For example, you can move Word file with the attachment to another folder or USB drive. Here are two other very important considerations. Updates don't sync to the original file and you can use link to file option only if files stay together. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to online training for everyone. Have a great day.